Ever heard that 84% of vegans quit their diet because they start to deteriorate? Yeah, we all have. And recently, the channel Lifting Vegan Logic did a video breaking down the claim. But I want to give you a different response that I think has some advantages over the points he covered. But real quickly, let's go over his rebuttals. 84% is for vegans and vegetarians combined, not just vegans. Vegans here refers to anyone eating a plant-based diet. But when you look at real vegans, which is to say those who are in it for the animals, absolute salad, retention rates go up. 58% of current vegans have been at it for more than 10 years. And people quitting a diet doesn't mean they quit because they were having health problems. All solid points. And really quickly, you might be wondering, well, what was the percentage for vegans or plant-based diets? Well, the study doesn't explicitly state it, but we can derive it from their data. We take the current vegans and divide that by the total number of vegans to get about a 30% retention rate, or a 70% drop rate for vegans, as opposed to the often quoted 84% drop rate. So, hence Henceforth, I'll be saying 70%, not 84%. And if we just look at vegetarians, they have an 86% drop rate, which is interesting considering the diet is by definition less restrictive than a plant-based one. And look, there's a lot of reasons this could be the case. Vegetarians being spineless hypocrites is just one hypothesis. But that's actually not the thing that's missing from the critique. What's missing is a discussion of base rate neglect. So first I'll describe what the f that is, and then I'll describe why I think it's a potentially better response. So imagine there's a study that finds 20% of people who eat avocados get cancer at some point in their lives. Many people's reaction would be, whoa, maybe I should stop eating avocados. But without the base rate, this number is kind of irrelevant. What do I mean? Well, imagine you then found out that the base rate for getting cancer in the general population was 80%. In other words, generally speaking, 80% of people get cancer at some point, regardless of their avocado eating habits. Does this change the way you view that initial avocado statistic? Are you a little less worried about eating avocados now? Okay, what if you found out the base rate was 5%? So generally speaking, only about 5% of people get cancer at some point in their lives. But 20% of avocado eaters do. Are you now a little more worried about eating avocados? And so base rate neglect refers to how we tend to rely more on that specific information, like the avocado statistic, than we do on base rate statistics when making judgments. In this diet case, the single 84% study, which is actually 70%, is the specific information. But what's the base rate statistic we are ignoring? Well, the percentage of diets that are quit in general. What if the average diet only has a 1% quit rate? What if it has a 99% quit rate. If only 1% of people ever quit their diet in general, and the other 99% ride it out to the day they die, then the plant-based diet looks pretty unsustainable, relatively speaking. But if the average diet has 99% of people quitting, meaning virtually everyone quits their diet at some point, well now only 70% of people quitting is actually looking pretty solid. And you might be thinking 70, 84, 99, whatever, that's like 15 to 30%. That's not a big difference, but you'd be wrong because percentages are tricky. So let me give you a visual to show how big this difference could potentially be. If the plant-based retention rate is 30% or about three out of 10, and the average diet is 10% or about one out of 10, the plant-based diet has roughly three times more retention. If the average diet's retention is 1%, the plant-based diet has 30 times more retention. And if it's 0.1%, the plant-based diet has 300 times more retention. So imagine if the headline for this article had instead been, you're 30 times more likely to stick with a diet if it's a plant-based diet. It's got a little bit of a different ring to it. And speaking of little things that make a big difference, if you're finding this video interesting or informative, consider checking out my Patreon in the description, where even a small contribution can help me make better content more often. So what is the base rate? Well, I actually had a pretty hard time finding any recent papers with a specific number or a similar methodology. So let me know if you find any solid research on this. But 95 to 99% is frequently bandied about the internet for diet failure in general. And this blog post makes a decent defense of that figure using some math I won't bore you with here. But just note, I wasn't looking for a study to see if people gained weight back, which is pretty much the rule in dieting research. I was looking to see a percentage of people who deviated from some initial diet parameters before the day of their death, or at least before three, five, or 10 years, but I couldn't find one. Now I did find this study which showed that 20% of people kept their weight off for a year or more, but this doesn't actually mean they stuck to their diet. They may have changed to an equally effective different diet, started to exercise more, made small changes to both diet and exercise, got better sleep, got to a maintenance phase, etc. But even if that 20% was the metric we were looking for, that would still mean that plant-based diets would have a higher retention rate than the average diet. 
So without a study, what do we do? Well, I think we can do a sanity check here and get a pretty good idea of where that number lies. So ask yourself this, how many times have you started a diet and stopped? Do you know anyone else who started a diet and stopped? What about multiple people who have quit multiple diets? Do you know anyone who stuck to a diet for more than a year or two years or three years? Personally, the only people I know who've consistently been on a diet for that long are either vegetarians, vegans, or are gluten-free because they have celiac disease. Combine this with the sheer number, proliferation, and general insanity of some diets, and this 95 to 99% drop rate seems like at least a decent guess. But this uncertainty is sort of the point. We don't know. And certainly the person throwing this number back at you doesn't know. And so when someone says 84% of vegans quit their diet, your answer can be something as simple as, and? What percent of diets are quit in general? In other words, what's the base rate? Because as we've seen, a base rate of 90, 99, and 99.9 can make a big difference. But why do I say I favor this response? Well, because one, it will likely expose a gap in the other person's knowledge, which is generally viewed as an effective way of changing people's minds. Two, you don't need to know basically anything about the study. There will always be some new study or piece of research that you haven't personally looked at. Now, of course, if you rebut a study directly, all the better. But it's always to your advantage to have an option where you don't have to. Three, it's quick. You don't have to get bogged down talking about specific percentage stratifications or methodology or p-values or conflicts of interest, etc, etc. Now, of course, these are all valid things to talk about, but they're not always the most rhetorically persuasive. Also, I realize most examples of base rate neglect you find online deal with predictive measures like false positives and things like that. But examples like this one still seem to me to fall under that umbrella. However, if you've got a better term to describe it, drop it in the comments. And a special shout out to my top tier patrons, Ryan O'Neill and Tom Eisenbeiss.